My name is Jim Moore. Uh, I'm an attorney here in Bangor. Uh, Moore, M-O-O-R-E. Um, I've been a member of the main bar for over 25 years and been practicing here in Bangor for over 20 years. I'd like to thank members of the commission for this opportunity to speak to you. Um, I'm grateful for the chance to voice opposition to TPP and grateful that we have such a dedicated group of public servants and main leaders on the commission. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I have just to tell you a little bit about myself beyond that, that I'm an attorney. I'm a third generation Mainer. Um, before I became an attorney, um, I was a high school teacher down in Lewiston. Um, and during the summers between teaching, I was, uh, and while I was in college, I had the opportunity to work at a paper company. And that income for uh, my brothers and me was a great benefit to our family. I'm also a father of three sons who are just entering the workforce. And I have three primary concerns about TPP. Um, the first is the loss of manufacturing jobs. Um, the second is my concern that as an attorney that TPP will give rights to foreign corporations which will not be enjoyed by companies in the United States. And third, I'm concerned that countries which will benefit from this trade agreement will not be able to live up to their end of the agreement by enforcing the labor, environment, copyright, and other laws that they're agreeing to enforce. Um, let me address each one of these three points, if I might. Uh, the first, with regard to loss of manufacturing jobs, um, we all appreciate that this is a, a complex issue. We can't just pin it on NAFTA or free trade. Technology has a big part of this. Um, there's other factors investing in our infrastructure. But um, nonetheless, uh, I, I certainly, uh, um, any of us here in Maine can see that we have suffered greatly because of the loss of manufacturing jobs. I worked at Pajepscut Paper, which was a small paper mill upriver, uh, Andrew Scoggin from Brunswick, and um, as well as my brothers. And the opportunity to work at Pajepscut Paper uh, funded our college educations. Um, I made almost as much in several months of the summer working at Pajepscott Paper as I did the rest of the year teaching high school. Um, we've, in addition to Pajepscott Paper on the Androscoggin going out of business many years ago, um, as a resident here in Bangor, we've all seen how most recently Bucksport, but paper mills in Bucksport, Lincoln, Old Town, Millinocket, and Brewer have all gone by the wayside and many very valuable jobs um, have gone along with them. And as a uh, attorney in this area, and also someone who's been active in the community as a coach and a father, I've seen dozens and dozens and dozens of families destroyed by loss of those jobs. Um, they were very good paying jobs that allowed for men and women to support their families and they were forced to take much lower paying jobs or move away from Maine because of that. Um, these jobs that I benefited from, that my brothers benefited from, and, and thousands in our state benefited from are no longer here. And as a member of our community, as a former high school teacher, as a son with, who sees um, young men and women the age of my kids, it's essentially two tracks they can go down now. One is education, higher education, if you're fortunate enough to come from a family that can pay for you to go to college, and you have the intelligence to go there. The other is the service industry. Um, the kids that aren't going on to college are going into very low wage jobs that are not on a livable wage. They're working at restaurants. They're working at hotels. Uh, they're working at stores. Uh, very low wage jobs. They're living in poverty. And they're holding down two or three jobs to try to make ends meet. They can't support their families. Um, I'm here in my private capacity, but professionally I'm a prosecutor. And case after case after case, I see people come before the court for violating the laws, and often they're coming from families that are split up, or both parents are working themselves to death, and they can't take care of their kids. Um, so these, these kids that ordinarily would have, in Millinocket or Bucksport or Old Town or Brewer, would have, in past generations, had the opportunity to go work at the mill and get a great paying job, those don't exist anymore. And for that kid 
who is, will work himself to death and do whatever is asked of him, but doesn't have the intelligence to get a PhD, doesn't have the intelligence to go to law school or med school or become an engineer, it's a dead end. Um, and I have to ask as a Mainer, and, and as to someone who's seen our economy decimated by foreign trade, why aren't we removing tariffs and entering into these agreements instead of adding more tariffs? Why are there tariffs to protect the paper industry? I'd rather see inflation and, and protection of the paper industry and still have each of these towns. Or these towns are defined by their paper mills, and they're gone now. Um, the, the second concern that I have um, with regard to TPP is um, that this agreement will allow for um, essentially a, a, a impose upon our uh, sovereignty because it's going to give rights to foreign corporations to come in and voice their disagreements with um, our government action, with our regulations, with, which, with our laws, um, with our court decisions, and um, in a tribunal, as I understand it, that's going to be governed by the World Bank or the UN, or and these will be private tribunals, um, not United States District Court, not the judiciary that's formed by our state government, but private arbitration. And um, my concern is, um, who's going to pay for this? It's going to, you know, be very wealthy for my colleagues who are attorneys, I suppose, maybe. But um, we're giving up some of our sovereignty here. Um, you know, we have, for, for, you know, over 200 years, it created a system in this country where we elect our leaders, our governor appoints judges, our senators nominate judges, and this seems like it's going to run roughshod over that. And Things will be decided other way, in other ways. And then, I guess, finally, um, my concern here is, um, and I'm here in my private capacity, but I, from decades, have seen how government operates at the federal level. And uh, my concern is that by entering TPP, we are going to um, enter an agreement. And by entering this complex agreement, it's one thing to say on paper that I'm going to, as a country, impose these protections, and I can assure the United States that we're going to have environmental laws, that we're going to have labor laws, that we're going to protect your copyrights, that our most, a lot of these copyrights are um, intellectual property that the brightest people in our society are creating. Are they going to have the opportunity, have the capacity to protect that? And here in the United States, we're very fortunate. We have invested billions in generations to develop an infrastructure. With regard to these three areas of copyright, environment, labor laws, we have the EPA, we have Department of Labor, we have Homeland Security and the FBI that protect copyrights. In order to establish those law enforcement agencies, uh, we have a very educated workforce to draw from. Um, the FBI, Homeland Security, Department of Labor, and EPA, they draw from our best college graduates and get very highly motivated people, and we pay them very well to spend very long hours to enforce our laws. Um, so we, we have an educated workforce. We have a government structure to recruit outstanding investigators and agents. We train them. We invest billions in training these inspectors for, for DOL, EPA, Homeland Security, and FBI. Um, what is there to lead us to believe that Vietnam, Singapore, Chile, Peru, Malaysia, Mexico are going to be able to do the same thing that we're already doing, that they're going to be able to hire trained investigators or invest, hire people that are capable of being trained, invest the resources, hire enough of them to enforce the labor standards that are being agreed to, to enforce the environmental standards that are being agreed to, and even understand the copyright laws that have to be enforced. Um, look at Mexico, one of the signatories. If Mexico cannot enforce laws which outlaw drug traffickers and violence associated with drugs, which result in thousands of deaths in Mexico, why should we believe Mexico will be, be able to have the capacity to enforce labor law, environmental law, and copyright laws? Um, I guess in conclusion, I would voice and conclude the same as others who have spoken before 
this honorable commission and say that I believe the TPP is an all-out assault on our dem democratic form of government. I agree that we are becoming overwhelmed by corporate interest, and that's why you see so much interest right now in some candidates that ordinarily probably would not, at the presidential level, ever be seriously considered. But they are being very seriously considered because they're seen as outsiders, not tied to corporate interests. Thank you very much for your time and consideration, and I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you.